Ladies and gentlemen, scientists at the University of Yale found out that social recognition is one of the biggest motivators in our lives. And I strongly believe in the fact that if you are just willing to make an impact, you can gain, we all can gain social recognition. Each human being, sooner or later in her or his life, wants to make an impact. The same applied to me a couple of years ago. After spending more than 25 years in the corporate world, I made up my mind to establish my first company. I had a very strong belief in my skills, in my self-confidence. I didn't know any limits. I didn't know any fears. At the same point in time, a few former business partners from India approached me and told me, Andres, it's great that you're establishing a new company. We have a very good idea for making an impact. We want you to invest in solar power. At this point in time, the Indian government released the so-called Initiative 2020, which meant that the government wanted to invest a few billion US dollars in order to install 20,000 megawatt in solar power. To me, it sounded to be a great idea. And I started to invest all my private wealth I had. I invested all my energy I had, and I traveled a few times around the world in order to see investors. What was the outcome? I didn't find any investors at all. Most probably, India seemed to be a little bit too exotic to these people. But at the same time, another thing happened in the industry. Radical changes occurred. First of all, the Indian government released new laws and regulations which inhibited people from the Western world to invest in this specific industry. Furthermore, Chinese competitors entered the market very aggressively and the price of solar panels dropped by more than 40%. In Germany alone, in Switzerland alone, more than 100,000 jobs were at stake. And what do you think? What happened to my startup? It went bankrupt. I failed. I was completely broke. But rather than being devastated and being depressed or frustrated, it was once again in my life a great opportunity to reflect on what it really means to make an impact and on how you can make an impact in the end. So I started to reflect and I found out a few things I've already known for years but apparently I had to relearn a few lessons. Fact number one, more than 50% of all projects, not just sustainable or social projects, but also infrastructure, energy projects, all kinds of projects, they fail. They suffer from substantial cost overruns. They suffer from substantial delays. And what happens if such projects fail? You, as a project manager, as an investor, as a stakeholder, as a third party who has been investing either time or money, loses credibility, you lose trust, and it will become more and more difficult to attract investors for a new project. The fact number two, or the lesson number two I learned is, change is the only constant in life. And it is very difficult to accept. You are sort of stuck in your comfort zone. You have your dreams, your goals, and everything. And then suddenly things did change very quickly. In the future, a lot of changes will pop up. And they will affect humanity. The biggest change I see is that we are running out of natural resources, especially water. This picture has, take, has been taken in Central Asia. There's no water anymore. Entire industries, farming industry, that just went bust. It's over. And although we are living in a very rich and nice country, we have plenty of resources, we will also feel very, very soon, or we already feel the pressure of running out of natural resources. That's just one drastic change. And then the lesson number three I learned is changes are opportunities. What did I do when I failed, when I went bankrupt? Being frustrated, clinging to my goal, looking for more investors, or just letting go and letting life flow? I had the courage to let go, but it took me some time, to be honest, to let go of my failure. 
And what happened after letting go after two and a half years? Suddenly, investors, stakeholders, professors from universities, universities popped up all over and told me, Andreas, we would like to do business along with you. We would like you to share your experience. We would like you to build up new companies. Suddenly, all these nice opportunities popped up. I don't know how, but apparently, I just let go. Within the framework of gaining such experience, and I'm sure you all gained such experience, similar experiences, the question is, how do we achieve the following goals? First of all, how can we run any kinds of project in a sustainable and successful way? And secondly, how can we cope with change? Or let's put it in another way, how can we create change? From my point of view, after a short period I spent on this planet in my life, I'm sure that this slogan holds to be true at any time. If you start to shine from within, you make also others shine. Not just people, but also the planet. Then you are able to make a real impact. And what does it mean to shine from within? It means to have the courage to listen to your heart and not just to your mind. What have I been doing wrong with my solar initiative? I'm really frank with you. I saw that I could make an impact, yes, but at the same time, I also saw a huge opportunity to make a lot of money. I already worked out a business plan and I saw ourselves along with my business partners at the stock exchange in New York and so on and so on. Business plans, they were great paper is very satisfying and it helps you to reassure you all the time. And we had our dreams and our visions, but my gut feeling told me that's not the business you should run into. I've been running many, many projects over the last 25 years, renewable energy projects costing 1 billion and more US dollars. And I exactly knew what could go wrong. But my mind told me, no, 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 you will be successful. And I saw all these nice financial figures up there. So the question is, yes, if we listen to our hearts and if we dare to dive deeply into our heart and we are so-called authentic, authentic with ourselves but also authentic with other people, by telling the truth to ourselves, we cannot just cope with change, we can create change. Very often we are stuck in a comfort zone and we are scared of trying new things out. We are scared to listen to our gut feelings. But if we turn that around, and if we start to be and then to have, rather than to have and then to be, then we will be able to create change. What do you think? How many startup companies do I see? They tell me, yeah, we have a great idea, but first of all, we must have some money. We must have a sound foundation, and then we can be entrepreneurs. It's the other way around. Be, first of all, of what you are supposed to become in this life, and then you will have all the means you need in order to fulfill your dreams. It just takes sometimes a little bit of time. So you might ask me, Andreas, it's great motivational speech, but how can you dare to tell such things? I have two good reasons for telling you these things. First of all, I'm sure that life is very generous with all of us. It gives us the opportunity every day to shine and to listen to our hearts. And I faced a few great challenges in my life, which showed me of what it means to be truly authentic. And even nowadays, today, I can prove it or not. And the second reason, most probably I had one of the best mentors on this planet, who showed me of what it means to shine. This mentor told me, Andreas, if you want to dare to live up to your principles and values, you have to be willing to pay the price. So what does it mean to pay the price? Yeah, you have to expose yourself the way you are. You have to get rid of your fears. This gentleman, this mentor, used to live in the 1940s, in the last century in Hungary. And his big dream was to fight for the independence of his country. And he dared to establish a new party, a political party, with one primary goal, to make Hungary independent. Six months after establishing this political party, 
his best friend betrayed him. And they put my mentor into a prison for 10 long years. A rather long time for reflecting of what it means to pay your price for being authentic and living up to your principles and values. After 10 years, he managed to escape along with his two brothers who were shot dead while they crossed the border between Austria and Hungary. He entered Switzerland, and I had the great chance to meet this mentor for the first time in my life on the 31st of July, 1964. It was the day when I saw my father for the first time. I've been talking about my father here. He told me, Andreas, I lost everything in my life. But one thing I did not lose, my values. And if you are willing to stick to a few values, then you can become highly successful. Value number one, listen to your heart, whatever it costs. And listening to your heart means to speak openly up, to tell the truth to yourself and other people. The second, it means also to build up authentic relationships. What do you think? How many joint ventures have I seen over the last couple of years which failed? More than 70% of all joint ventures fail. Not because you have the wrong party of manager who are not willing to collaborate. Because they are not willing to share their values and talk about their joint vision. The value number two, he told me, is you have to respect other people and other beings. Whatever they have been doing to you, whether they have been doing harm to you or not, it does not matter. Show respect for other people in an open way, which also means to be willing and daring to give a frank feedback. And that was rather difficult for me to understand. As a child, what does it mean to appreciate other people? They put my father into prison for mo almost 10 years. And the value number three is be patient. It might take 10, 20, even 30 years until you reach a heart-driven goal. It takes patience. So, at the age of five, I apparently owned all success principles I needed to know. But at 10, I had lost all of them. And at 27, I got the first big chance in my life to reclaim them. What happened? When I went to school at six, pupils, my fellow mates, they just avoided me. They told me, Andreas, your father, you are the son to a criminal human being. He spent more than 10 years in prison. So they avoided me. They did not play with me. They did not talk to me. And I ask you frankly, what happens if you do not get recognition, if you do not get love, if you do not get respect as a human being? What happens? What are we doing? I tried out any strategy in order to get just a glimpse of recognition. Strategy number one, I just pulled out, I became a maverick. Then I became depressed, I didn't gain anything at all. Then strategy number two popped up, yeah? What did I do? I started to fight. A fight against my pupils, but normally I just lost. It did not work out either. And then there's only one strategy left for getting recognition. That was just to adapt, to conform, to do what other people want you to do. I've been playing this game for a long time until, the end of, until uh, I reached the age of 20, and I lost all my self-confidence. But then, after studying, finishing my studies at the Federal University of Technology in Zurich, I started a job in a team which was supposed to build one of the biggest hydropower plants in Switzerland, costing 500 million Swiss francs. And I was quite enthusiastic, and it was a big chance to do what I wanted to do as an engineer. I had a great boss at this point in time, 35 years young only, highly credible, highly authentic. He really knew how to build up trust. On a cold winter day, it was February 1991, I got up and I wanted to leave my apartment when I heard the telephone ringing in the living room. I just dropped my bags because I felt something is wrong. I ran back to the living room, picked up the phone, and for a slight moment, I didn't hear anything. It was absolute silence. And then suddenly I heard the voice of the chairman of our company who told me, Andreas, I do not want to beat around the bush. Your boss just died in an airplane crash. 
So I was devastated and the entire company was devastated. We had to find a new project manager for this large hydropower plant and we had to find a new, a new head of department. We found somebody with a huge, great track record. After only one year, 30% of all employees had left the company. So something went apparently wrong. It was again a trust issue. Almost one year later, somebody knocked at the door of my apartment in Bern. I opened the door and I saw the chairman again smiling at me. I was already shocked. Oh, bad news again? What has been going wrong? And he told me, Andreas, just take it easy. The board took the decision that we will dismiss your boss tomorrow morning. We cannot continue like this. And the even better news is that we have already a new boss, a new project manager. That's you. I will give you 24 hours in order to reflect that decision. And tomorrow morning, you have to tell me whether you would like to accept the role or not. It took me five seconds to tell him, yes, I will do it. Young, enthusiastic, and I saw a great opportunity to make a great career, to make more money, to gain a good reputation in the market. So I started the job as a project manager. And after two years, what happened? I lost 20 million Swiss francs in this project. And the client, Swiss government, called me and my chairman to an extra meeting with the board. And they told me, Andreas, you have six months' time in order to fix the project. Can you do that? If not, then we will cancel the contract with your company. Although from a legal point of view, it would not have been possible, maybe. But there was enough pressure on me and on the board in order to make a few things move. And what happened three weeks later, I had a collapse. I was lying in bed for more than four weeks. I could not move anymore. I was paralyzed in a way. And it was the great chance in my life again after a failure to reflect on what I should do. Should I run off and look for a new job? Should I change myself? What could I do? And then I started to remember the values my father told me to be authentic, to dare to be vulnerable, to expose yourself. And I made up my mind to resume my job as a project manager and to change my behavior drastically. It didn't take me six months to fix the project. It took me eight years in order to fix it. But after eight years, I fixed it and I learned one thing. After fixing the project and making an extra profit of 50 million Swiss francs along with my team, it's all about trust and it's all about mutual respect. What I learned over this period of time, I summarized in a sort of a formula of change. And each time I applied this formula, I was rather sure that I could be successful and make an impact. And each time I did not stick to these principles, I failed. I call this formula fascinate, and each letter stands for a principle, a value. The first three letters, F, A, and S, account for your authenticity. And I would like to dive just quickly into the first three letters. The letter number one, the principle number one, F, stands for focus or fire. You cannot develop fire if you do not focus. And if you do not have the clarity with yourself of what you would like to achieve, you cannot fire yourself up and you cannot fire other people up. There are only two questions you can ask yourself in order to find out of whether you develop fire inside yourself with what you are doing every day. The question number one you can ask yourself is, why am I doing the things I'm just doing right away? Why? The answer to this question leads to the meaning of what you're doing. Why are you doing the work you're just doing right away? Why have I been doing the investment in solar power plants? Because it was a heart-driven goal? For sure not. It was just an opportunistic decision in my life, to be frank. And I paid the price, for sure but also gain some insights. And the second question you, ask, you can ask yourself, and I will give you a little example. A couple of months ago, I saw an old friend 
and he used to be a chief financial officer with one of, a, with one of the largest multinational companies in Switzerland. He made a killing, to be frank. And when I saw him, I realized that he lost more than 30 kilos of his weight. And I asked him, what has been going wrong in your life? And he told me, Andreas, to be frank, I don't like my job anymore. I make a killing, but you see, I'm burning out. And I asked him a stupid question. Would you do the job if you were not paid for it? He looked at me and told me, yeah, for sure not. I would never perform this jo job if I were not paid for it. And I asked him, what would you like to do in your life? I would like to become a watchmaker. That's my true passion. I'm longing for making, fixing watches at the age of 45. What do you think what happened with him? He left his job and started an apprenticeship as a watchmaker at the age of 45. And what was the outcome? He starts to shine from within because now he starts to find his inner peace and starts to radiate this energy to the outer world. And you can give only things you already own in your life. And if you won't provide peace to the planet, then you have to find first your inner peace. The second principle, authentic presence. What does it mean? To be present not just with people, but to be present with yourself. To dare to listen to your intuition and to your gut feeling. And also to learn to perceive of what other people feel and what they need. Within the framework of change projects, you face a lot of resistance, you face fears. And based on that, people, they are not very open. They do not want to share their feelings, their emotions. So the crucial key is to perceive of what these people feel. And then the third principle, collaboration. Collaboration, more than 70% of all joint ventures and collaborative partnerships, they fail. I already mentioned why. A lack of a shared vision and a lack of shared values. And Mother Nature is showing us very, very nice things. 71% more uplift. Canada geese, for example, they fly in a V shape, which means they generate 71% more uplift. Nature shows us on how to collaborate with each other. All the other principles, taking initiative, being commitment, and also empower people, are just, just a natural outcome of your true authenticity. Based on that, I dared to create, along with other partners, a new company called Swiss Impact Enablers, driven by a mission, by walking new ways, we transform together challenges into sustainable solutions so as to pre preserve our future. And what's the key of the business model after running dozens of different projects, especially also fixing projects that were deep in crisis. First of all, we enable, which means we bring project IDs, project sponsors, together we match them with investors. But we also make sure that they share a joint vision and share the values in order to produce a collaborative partnership which really works. But then secondly, that's not the end. We are going to empower people, providing them with the right skill set. And you see, based on our business model, it's a mix of building the bridge among different skills in different areas, such as management, leadership, new sciences, but also spirituality. Because many, many things in life we still do not understand, but spirituality is nothing else but a sort of a new science which is which is providing a lot of answers to crucial questions in our life. And last but not least, we are going to establish startups by providing them not with managers and coaches, but with providing them by providing them with energy. We are driven, driven by this fascinate model. Last but not least, what does it take to make an impact? That's my personal conclusion. In order to make an impact, it takes courage. Or, to put it in a way, not to be scared of doing things. Courage means to step out of your comfort zone and just taking initiative. So let's make a practical example. It's very simple. I have here a book. It's free of charge. It doesn't cost anything. 
The only thing you have to do is to be willing to pay the price to step out of your comfort zone. The book is called Dare, Attaining Greatness Through Authenticity, and it deals with a polar bear who is walking through life and following his journey to more authenticity. So who dares to take a first step in order to get this book? Thank you very much. So it takes a little, small step in order to move out, and that's the only thing which it really takes. We are concluding this speech, and I want you to do a little exercise along with you. The question is, impact is a very broad term. Everybody here in this room understands something else about making an impact. My big dream is still to plant one million trees in the desert of Gobi. Whether it works or not, I have no clue. But I know if I do that, and if I did that, most probably I would make an impact. And I have no idea on how to measure this impact. So I ask you to take a piece of paper, and a few of the co-founders here of the Swiss Impact Enablers are also present in this room. They will hand over, or all, you have already a piece of paper, and I would like you to just note one key word down, or a short sentence, what does impact mean to you? Then after that, we are going to pin that on the flip charts, and we will take a picture, and Klaus Michael, who is, by the way, also one of the co-founders of Swiss Impact Enablers, will send you the picture. So let's create a joint vision of making an impact together. I wish you all the success for your life and for all your great projects. Thanks very much.